Welcome. This uh, screencast will show you how to do a multiple group analysis in Amos. Um, as part of that, I'll show you briefly how to set groups in Amos, how to read in your data so that Amos knows which data points go with which groups. Um, generally, how you should, how you can or should label parameters so that you can introduce the appropriate model constraints in the with the manage models uh, command. A couple of things to note first off is that we're going to be doing these multiple group constraints uh, or multiple group analyses um, to test measurement and variance. Um, we're going to be estimating intercepts. So what you need to make sure is in the view menu and analysis properties that the box estimate means and intercepts is checked. When you do that, it will allow us to estimate uh, the means and intercepts for each of the items. All right, uh, so one thing you need to do is tell Amos uh, which, uh, or tell Amos what groups you're going to be dealing with or define them. Um, you can see right here in this box uh, what groups I've defined uh, in this analysis. I have men and women. So in order to set those, you go to Analyze, Manage Groups, and you name your groups, and you can put as many groups as you need. So if there are three or five groups, you can create three or five of these. And you just name them whatever, and it's arbitrary what you name them as far as Amos is concerned. You just need something that will uh, help you keep that straight. Once you have things named, you need to tell Amos about the data. So go to the Data Files menu, uh, option in the File menu, and it will bring up this screen. Um, here on the left you have the group name, um, the next column is the file, uh, so this tells us tells Amos which file to look in to find the data for men and the data for women. You'll notice that it's the same data file here, um, but it doesn't need to be. You can have uh, data spread across two files or however many files you have as groups. The variable column tells uh, Amos in this data file which variable identifies the group. So what's that grouping variable? And in this case it's sex. And then the value says which value on the group sex um, refers to men, which one to women. In this case it's one for men and two for women. And then N of course will just tell you how many men and how many women you have in your data set. So to select the file for men you click on that row, click file name, and click on the data set that you want. In this case it's data analysis one factor. To get the grouping variable just click on grouping variable and it'll bring up a list of variables in your data set for, uh, that we've just identified. And you select the variable that identifies the group and then with group value it tells you that on sex in that data file sex takes on the values of one and two and one refers to men and to women. So that would set everything for men and we just repeat the process for women. It's also possible if you have a data set of uh, which corresponds instead of to raw data to uh, correlation matrix and means and standard deviations for uh, different groups you can have two separate uh, data files for those groups. Um, and then you read those in and you don't have to go through the grouping variable or the group value thing because Amos will know that since you're pointing to two different data sets um, that all the data in those data sets refer either to the men or women or whatever your groups are. So click OK. Alright, so once you've got uh, your groups defined and Amos knows what they are and the data files associated with those groups, you need to label each of your parameters. And this is done just as it was before except that we're going to provide different labels for the groups. Um, and so that we want a unique label uh, for the first factor loading for men um, and a unique label for the first factor loading for women. And we want that for all the parameters. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and done that for men and women. So here are the parameters for men. And you can see that there's an M before each of them. If I go over here and click on women, 
you'll see that they change and I put an F in front of all of them for female. So up here we have the variance, the latent factor variance for women, the five factor loadings, the five item intercepts, and the five error variances. I've done the same thing for men. The important thing to note when you do this is uh, has to do with an option in the object properties menu. So right click, select object properties, and here is where we've named the parameter. So you can see that this first item intercept for weight 2, I've named M, MU2 and mu for the Greek letter mu, which often represents averages. So this is uh, the intercept for item 2 uh, for men. Right here is the key thing, and it's the all groups. If this is checked, which it is by default, it'll provide whatever name you put down in here for both men and women. So you have to make sure that is unchecked when you start naming uh, parameters. And I've gone ahead and done that in each of these situations, or with each of these parameters, to make sure that things will be unique across uh, men and women in the model. Okay, so you can go through that uh, and name each of the parameters. Once we have our par parameters named, we can use the Manage Models command in Amos to set constraints across groups. So the first one we're going to do is the Configure Model. So go to Analyze and then Manage Models. We'll bring up this Configure Model. Remember, the only constraint in the Configure Model is that uh, two of the factor loadings, or one factor loading, one in each group is equal to each other. So the first thing we're going to do is set the first factor loading for men, MB2, equal to the first factor loading for women, M, uh, or FB2. We're going to set that equal to 1, and we're setting, again, a factor loading to 1 to uh, identify the model. Our next model is the metric invariance model. So click New, call this one metric. Remember, the metric model uh, uses the same constraints as the configurable model, but adds more, namely that the other factor loadings are uh, equal across groups. Now, within a group, each factor loading is estimated uniquely, so not all factor loadings within a group are equal, but the factor loadings across groups are equal. So we can set up those constraints by saying that the third MB3 is equal to FB3, MB4 equal to FB4, and so on through six. All right, our next one is the scalar invariance model. And here we're going to set not only the factor loadings equal across groups, but we're also going to set the item intercepts equal across groups. So that's what I've done here. So I've added these lines of constraints say the intercepts for 2 through 6 are equal for men and women. Okay, we'll do the fourth model, which is the residual variance model. And here we set factor loadings, item intercepts, and residual variances equal to one another. And then our last model is the structural model. Here we'll set factor loadings, item intercepts, residual variances, and factor variances equal to one another. So we click close, and now we've set up each of these five models uh, that test the different types of measurement and variance. All right, once you've set up all your constraints in the Manage Models command, click Save, and then click your abacus to calculate the estimates. Everything looks okay. Now we can view the output and we'll go straight to the model comparisons and we can see uh, the nested chi-squared tests comparing uh, each of the nested models to uh, the ones above it. That's all you have to do to do uh, multiple group comparisons. In